Hello everybody, it's been a while since I covered this game. The developer reached out to me and asked me if I would hop on to try out the new changes. There's actually about two series of patch notes that I didn't cover or make a video on, so I guess we're just gonna go over the whole entire thing in this video. Shout out to the developer though for giving me a single player test version of the game client to show you guys all of the new changes and updates that are about to come. And like anything else, we're gonna go down this list from top to bottom, so let's get into this. First thing I noticed was the character model looked different when I logged in. Upon logging into the single player client, the first thing I did was lower the volume because my ears are virgins and don't like loud noises. I noticed the starting area surroundings have been changed and look much much nicer and I noticed that on the FPS counter there's a lot less frames being used now. I also noticed that the action bar and player resource bars such as health and mana are now placed in a way more convenient area to where it's more visible. If I was to critique this a bit, I would say you don't need your player name and level above your resource bars and on top of your character with another health bar on top of that. I could recommend offering a toggle feature to where I can turn off the extra health bar and names above my character and above my resource bars as most players will think that it is very annoying while others will actually really like the implementation. After doing some sneaky hacker man stuff to boost my stats to where I can explore the single player client to try out these changes, I headed my way to the warp portal and discovered three locations. I tried Rolk Island but it didn't do anything so I went to Water Kingdom then back and realized Rolk Island is the starting zone because I have a maximum of two IQ points. So the first thing on this list of things to do is to try the five new dungeons added to the starting zone or other name for it is Rolk Island. All dungeons are located by the skull on the player's map. Me being an intellectual with my two maximum IQ points I already knew the field dungeon so I headed out on my adventure to try out the dungeon past the purple PvP stone. Upon getting close I see something hovering above a bubble that strangely resembles a beedrill from Pokemon and further interaction I forgot you require dungeon keys to get into the dungeons. The developer then gave me the command code to get the keys I needed for the dungeon, so let's try this dungeon out. I run in, do a little kiting to see if the boss will do anything, he seems to be zoned out so I kill him and take his boss specific crafting material. I do really like bosses dropping specific crafting materials, but I do dislike how there's very little mechanics, but I'm pretty sure the developer said that he would add mechanics later in the future to the bosses. I then realize after leaving the dungeon it teleported me to the field's dungeon location, which I think I should probably mention to the developer. Later I asked the developer what the other key commands are, which he gave me all of them, key 03 being Sting's key. I then did the flower pot den, and really liked how the monster had a ranged attack that made it difficult to kite. Only reason why it missed was because I was level 200 with pretty insanely high stats from the dev commands that were given to me for this test. I then went up north to see what dungeon was up at the tippy top of the map of Rolk Island. Before reaching my destination, I took a moment to appreciate a pirate ship that was at the dock at the older client's fishing trader NPC that wasn't there before. Also, there's this portal that offers to teleport you to three different locations. I finally reached the dungeon to find out the name of it was called the Bird Den, not Bird Box, don't get it confused with the movie. Upon entering, I do what I normally do and try and see if I can cheese the boss with kiting and for the Bird Den, you can. All you need is for someone to kite the boss around while others deal damage until they're aggroed and then they just kite in return. This falls back on what I said earlier, I really hope that more mechanics are added to these bosses in the future. I am then teleported back to the Flower Pot Den dungeon. I headed by way over to the dungeon up by the pirate ship to see what that's all about too. I entered the Hermit King's lair just to cheese him with the kiting. I really hope more mechanics get added later. At this point we complete a majority of the dungeons leaving only two left, the mole and the skeletal mage. I arrived at the skeletal mage's dungeon and was overcome with how cute he was floating above the bubble. I also really like how the dungeons are bubbles themselves, it adds such a uniqueness to the game. Upon killing the skeletal mage, I really liked how accurate he was with his ranged attack. This is what would make the warrior's block useful before the warrior could block over 100% of damage making him basically immune to all sources of damage as 100% of damage is literally 100%. Anything over you go into negative values, bosses like this is what would give having a warrior value, as even having 20 to 40% block would give you the warrior, a tanking purpose, and paired up with a healer, you're now starting to enter the territory of a, of a real MMORPG party synergy system. I looked at the map and realized the only place left I had to go was the mole, so I headed off that way to the land of copper and iron to see how tough this boss would be just to be met with the most adorable looking creature. I now no longer call you the Mole Rat King, but Rufus, my adorable Mole Rat Companion. Upon entering, it was the same thing. Melee bosses really need more mechanics, as having no mechanics, they're easily just kited around. 
Next on the list is the new island that has no content, it's just for testing. No, literally, that's what the patch note says. So let's go to the land of no content, just for testing. For anyone who doesn't know, in Rolk Town, the handyman makes all the dungeon keys. I also walked over to the blacksmith to see the new weapons that were added, which are the new level 25 weapons. However, most of us testers went so hard in the original client, we're all mostly level 70 or higher. I noticed a new NPC called the Carver, who is where you go to to make your bow, staff, and wands for the ranger, mage, and healer. I then went to the land of no content, just for testing, and took a look around and oh my gosh this water kingdom is the most beautiful thing to look at and walk around in. I then looked at elementary island again and seen that herb nodes were added but that was about it from last time as before it only had monsters. Now the real question I need to ask myself is this. I know for a fact I more than likely would be able to solo the ranged boss dungeons but it would be tougher but what I really want to see is how much can I cheese the melee dungeons with my character on the live servers. Um I was wrong i'm actually not level 70 plus i was thinking of the older client i'm actually only level 56 on my mage uh the difference between the single player client is that i'm a fire mage and this build i'm actually a water mage with actual uh real stats and uh real um equipment okay so let's see uh how this goes down so keep in mind water build i'm currently in the best in slot water gear except for the weapon because there's a new weapon now and we're going to go in and fight a boss that is, uh, I'm weak against because he has water resistance. So here we go. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to pop a big water spell. A lot of my skills are on cooldown. I think I might be able to outwalk him. His AI reset. Just managed to hit me a little bit. Oh, he summons a little crab thing. But they're really easily killed, though. Now, if I pop my big thing again, is the AI reset? I don't even need to sprint. I can literally just kite this guy just by walking. And then I think he might be dead here. Oh no. I'm out of mana. Yeah, I'm out of mana here. But I can sacrifice health. Get some mana back. And then this should kill him. Yeah, we got him. There we go. You can easily solo these, uh, the melee bosses if you just kite them. Because that boss had a resistance to water, and I was still able to solo him. I am level 56, so I feel like it would have taken me a lot longer to do if I was lower level. Um, keep in mind also, the reason why I say that is because my, uh, water stat is a lot higher than what would be, like, the bare minimum for that instance. Uh, I don't think my gear would make much of a difference. I mean, obviously it would, because, like, I'm in the best in slot for a water build, uh, except for the weapon. So, if I wasn't, if I didn't have the appropriate gear, I feel like I would have struggled. And there we go. There's the staff. Dismantle my old staff. Go to sockets. I get my rune back. And then there we go. I got my rune chance back in there. 
So now I have 43 chance plus 10. So that's a total of 53 extra chance on my gear. So now I should be, I'm sitting at 540 water at level 56. And yeah, that's it. So thank you guys for watching and checking out my content. If you want to see more and be up to date, why not subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of my content that I make. You can also find me on Twitter and I also stream over on Twitch and also check out our PvP community Discord server where you can meet other PvPers in the AQ3D community. Take care, everyone.